Maybe you're just like me and you've seen these Apple style animations all over social media. But what is the secret behind these type of smooth animations? Well, today we're going to create this animation and you will not only find out how to exactly recreate this, I will also tell you about the secrets behind creating these seamless transitions. So let's jump into it. We're here in After Effects and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to use the 4K 25 frames per second preset. Now the duration I'm going to set to like 10 seconds. We don't need to create it too long. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a black solid. So I'm just going to go to layer new solid or you can also press command Y or control Y on Windows. And then I'm just going to change the color to like a really dark gray, maybe even like almost to black. And I like to not use fully black. So basically something like this, make comp size and press OK. So we have a nice background to work with and I'm going to create the first element and that's going to be a record button on iPhone. So let's use the rounded rectangle tool because I'm going to use it as a record button and we can always make it more rounded. So let's click on that and you go into this by clicking and holding your mouse down and then we can change the fill color. I'm going to use a red color, maybe something like this, not fully red, but almost in the top corner. It's okay. Make sure the stroke is set to none. It's okay. And then let's just click and drag and I'm going to hold shift to make sure it stays proportionally. Maybe something like this I like. Perfect. I'm going to align it in the center, of course, and I'm going to open up my properties and I have my roundness here. Now, if you don't have your properties tab, update your After Effects or go into the rectangle tab in your layer panel. Now, change the roundness a bit so it's not fully round, but maybe something like this. It's nice. I'm happy with that. And now let's add a circle. Uh, we can just go to the ellipse tool by clicking and holding your mouse down and then let's make sure that nothing is selected and make a ellipse again hold shift something like this and in this case i'm going to turn the fill off so i'm going to set that to none so i'm going to click on the stroke and i'm going to make that white and i think actually eight pixels that seems nice and let's center it then and that's perfect now one thing i wanted to check is basically if the rounded rectangle is fully round what it will look like then ah, that's nice looks nice we can always scale it a bit so i'm happy with that now let's make the first animation uh, we basically have this record button and it's already recording now i want to basically make it stop recording right so let's go to our red rounded rectangle and we have the roundness here we can just set a keyframe for that so set the stop or click on the stopwatch you can also go into the rectangle path and then setting a keyframe on the roundness i'm going a bit further maybe like one second and i'm going to turn the roundness up don't do it too much because that will mess up the animation later on so basically just the minimum what's needed to make it fully round which is in my case around 200 then i'm also going to press s for scale and then click a keyframe press u to see our keyframes and then let's move this to the left and then i'm gonna drag this up to maybe something like this and basically what happens now as you can see it will turn around the rectangle to a circle and it will scale out now of course we can also select these keyframes and hit f9 on our keyboard to easy ease them and we can even go into the graph editor and then selecting the first keyframes and dragging those out a bit and selecting the last keyframes and dragging those out a bit now maybe you have a plugin for this but i think this is also it looks really nice but this will also work so if we now play it back you can see we have a really smooth animation going from a rounded rectangle to a circle now you might wonder tom how do you make these seamless transitions and some people love to storyboard and then it's a bit easier because then you already know which scene is going to be next what i really like is thinking of how can i make it go from this to the next scene and just doing it from scene to scene to scene and it really tickles my brain when i think of like okay how do i go from this blue button to a red circle or thinking of how can i make this scene about recording going to a scene about traveling which we're gonna do in this case so you can do something with an airplane you can do something with a map maybe with a passport maybe something with booking a flight so we can turn this record button into a booking a flight button but you've already seen the end result we're gonna go into a map and to do that i need to turn this button into a blue map icon right and a blue map icon looks a bit different uh, so we're gonna just do that and we're gonna do that by changing the color of the red to blue and we do that by going into the shape and just going into the fill and we can just set a keyframe for the color and i'm gonna do that around here and i'm gonna make it go from red to blue okay and i'm also gonna go into the top shape layer which is the circle and we want to make that more thick so let's go into this ellipse and go into the stroke and let's set a keyframe for the stroke width i'm gonna drag this also to the left and i'm gonna make it basically so it fills the whole edge something like this cool so we already have a map icon i'm happy with that 
And we can already select both layers, press U on our keyboard to see the keyframes. And of course, we can also select these keyframes and hit F9 to make them a bit more smooth. That already looks super dope. Now, one thing you see a lot in these Apple style animations is that the background changes a color. That can be by fading it in, but also a really cool effect is that it comes from these sides. And I'm already going to implement that. So I'm going to just go to layer new solid and I'm going to make this, of course, white. Uh, you can do fully white or you can do it a bit like off white ish, something like this. That's okay. Now we're going to drag this below our record button. So around here. And now, like I said, you can even fade it in by pressing T for transparent and setting a keyframe for the opacity. And then basically just setting it to zero here. And if you time it well with the animation, you can see that it actually works really nicely. It's a really minimal animation, but it works right. Maybe time it a bit different so it goes with the other animation. As you can see, it looks really cool in my opinion. But if you want to do it a bit more fancy, like I just mentioned, let's remove these keyframes. Then let's go to the ellipse tool and make sure nothing is selected. And then zoom out a bit and make sure your circle covers the whole image. Hold shift to make it proportionally. And I would say something like this should work. And go to the selection tool, make sure it's covering the whole image. So something like this. And we can turn the stroke off and we can turn the fill on. And the color doesn't matter. Make it any color you like. Just pick your favorite color here, right? And then we can use this as a track mat. Uh, so you don't have to move this down. If you want to, you can. It's nice to keep things neat. So let's uh, move it down and put it above the white solid that we created. And then I'm gonna use the track mat feature, which is here. Uh, if you don't see this, you might need to click on toggle switches modes. And then we can just drag the white solid track mat to the shape. Nothing will really change. Just gonna press on the invert button, which is next to the track mat feature. That will disable the white solid. And now the cool thing comes here. And now I'm gonna show you the trick. If we're gonna press S for scale on this shape, we can set a keyframe. We can move this to the middle where our record button also changes and we can set it to 0% scale. So it goes from 100% to zero. And then if we go to toggle switches modes and we're gonna add a motion blur to everything, you will see we can already quickly preview this and what it will look like. And as you can see, this is a really, really cool effect. But before we continue, I have to tell you this. If you're an editor who wants to level up, land high paying clients and edit like the pros, listen up. Inside the Social Creator Club Pro, you'll get access to project files from my YouTube videos, exclusive asset packs, including a UI pack, deep dives on all popular styles using Premiere Pro, After Effects and Blender, interviews with editors of Ali Abdal, Magnets Media and more, and a six week roadmap to get your first client and earn one to 5K a month as an editor. But you also get two weekly live calls, premium stock footage, editing challenges, and even potential client opportunities. So if you are serious about making it as an editor, click the link below and I'll see you inside. Let's go back into the tutorial. Now, of course, we can also easy ease it. You can even go into the graph editor and maybe selecting the last keyframe and then dragging that out a bit. So it will look something like this. And as you can see, this is such a cool animation, right? And now that we did the background change, we're going to add the map. And I'm really excited for this. So let's just import a map. I have one right here of the beautiful Amsterdam. But you can just take a screenshot from Google Maps. So I'm going to import that. You can also drag this in and let's drag this in here. Now, basically, what I want to do is move this below our map icon and I want to scale this up. So press S for scale. Let's set this really high and just make sure that it's a bit of a realistic size with the map icon, which should be around here, maybe even a bit bigger. Maybe we need to scale it even a bit bigger, something like this. And this already looks cool, right? Next to the Holland Casino. Nice. Now let's animate this. I'm going to go to layer new null and we're going to use this null object to scale it down. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is linked to it except the background. So just hold shift and then just select all the layers, which is the shape, the shape and the screenshot, which is the Google Maps. And we're going to parent these to the null. Then we're going to go to the null, press S for scale, set a keyframe. And I'm going to drag this also to when it changes into a map icon, something like this. And let's just scale it down. I might change these keyframes a bit, but maybe to something like this, I think will work. That looks pretty cool. I like it. Maybe I'm going to drag this out already a bit because I think we need some timing. That looks nice. That looks nice. Cool. Let's select these keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard. Go into the graph editor and I'm going to select the last keyframe and I'm going to move it so it's really nice and smooth. That already looks super, super nice. Now I'm going to go to the screenshot, which is our map. Let's go to T for transparency, set a keyframe 
and let's drag this out and basically we're gonna make sure that it fades in and that looks so dope let's play this quickly looks super super nice now what i don't like is that the map is a bit cut off weird so i'm gonna create a quick rounded rectangle so i'm gonna click on the rounded rectangle tool make sure nothing is selected and i'm just gonna make a quick rounded rectangle maybe something like this let's add a bit of roundness not too much this will work let's align this to the center and let's align this to the center and basically what i'm just gonna do is i'm gonna use this as a track mat so let's drag this also so it's above the map just so everything is a bit more neat let's go into the toggle switches modes and i'm gonna use this as a mat too so let's drag that there we go and as you can see this looks way nicer nice all right and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select this rounded rectangle that i made and i'm also gonna link that to the null so it basically will also scale with it let's go to the toggle switches and let's also make sure the motion blur is set on on everything now one more thing i want to add a cool text animation so i'm just gonna press p for position on the null object i'm gonna set a keyframe i'm gonna go a bit further and since everything is already linked to it we can just hold shift and drag this up so this goes out of the way then we're going to go to the text tool click and i'm going to type here apple style the font i'm using is san francisco pro it's also a font that apple uses a lot i'm going to of course center that and i'm also going to change the fill but here comes the trick we're going to right click on the text we're going to go to layer styles and we're going to go to gradient overlay go into this gradient overlay and you can already see it a bit let's go into the edit gradient i'm going to make the left color a bit of a grayish style so something like this and the right one completely black and as you can see there's a bit of texture there's a bit of a gradient in it not much but enough that you can see it a bit which is really nice we can now make it even a bit bigger so let's just scale it up a bit we have to go to the align tool again and center it and now for the animation we're going to click on animate and we're going to press position and i'm going to click on add and property and then opacity because we want to animate the opacity and the position. Now let's start with the position first. Let's move this a bit down, not too much, but something like this, and let's turn the opacity down. Then go into the range selector, go into advanced, and then change based on two words, the shape to ramp up, and the ease low to 100%. And now we're gonna animate it, and we're gonna animate it by animating the offset. So set a keyframe for that. Let's move a bit to the beginning. Let's set it to minus 100%, and let's set it here to 100%. So it goes from minus 100% to 100%. Then of course we can add some motion blur to this. Then we're gonna go into the null, and I'm gonna select these keyframes, hit F9 on your keyboard, and go to the graph editor. And let's make this a bit more smooth. I'm gonna ramp it in and ramp it out, basically. And then you get something like this, and as you can see, it's a really cool style that you can implement in every animation. I think a lot of clients will love this and I do really want to motivate everyone to be creative. Find creative ways to make a cool transition and I'm sure that people will love it. Of course, don't forget to leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe and then thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.